not a con. You ready? Okay. I'm Mark Stanislav, and today I'm going to be presenting Get Smarty. Um, it's actually going to be an interactive presentation, so if you actually have a laptop with you, um, I have a development server that Mitch must help me set up, and uh, we're going to let you develop and actually win prizes, so start developing. Um, before I get into this, I kind of want to make a couple notes which were on my slide, so I'm going to try to remember them. Um, this is going to be an overview of Smarty. It's not going to be practical applications of Smarty because it's a presentation layer. So I can't, I'm not going to show you how to web design. I'm not going to show you what CSS is or anything like that. Um, it's pretty much just the parts and pieces that will allow you to create your own um, templates, which is the basis of what Smarty does. And I had a couple more things. But. OK, um, if you actually want to log into the server, here's the information. Is anyone going to develop, actually? James, prizes, Muchimus? OK, good. So I'll write this down. And uh, you guys? Hmm? Oh, we're already there. Everyone good? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, first, I'll go over a couple like basic things about Smarty. Smarty is a presentation framework for PHP. Um, inherently, that just means that you're only dealing with one layer of, of that the program um, itself when you're developing software, um, as opposed to having all of your code echoing within your PHP. You're going to break it up into templates and your application code. You know this this does different different things for you, such as readability. Uh, when you're not looking through the code and trying to see where your function was for the echoing, where your function was for you know the CSS, where your function was for looping through that um, array to get your data, uh, you you have a lot more uh, concise and clean code to deal with. So maintainment's a lot easier for anyone that that has to actually look at your code if you're developing a public application. Uh, it's free and open source software. Um, I actually want to thank uh, the Smarty website, smarty.php.net, for posting that we were, um, that I was talking here today. According to Froggy, they're actually our top refer, so that's pretty cool. Um, also, uh, it's insanely very quick and easy to implement and learn. Um, I probably had about uh, maybe three hours of three hours of reading the documentation, and I was starting to convert my whole uh, web software over to Smarty right away. So um, the, the installation, as much of us probably found out, is pretty much just a copy and paste of a tarball into um, the PHP libs directory. There's not much more setup than that. Um, the framework's uh, extensible. It's based on plugins. Uh, everything runs as a plugin, so you're not wasting any, um, any more memory to run anything that you don't need right then. You, you can load your own plugins in, which I'm actually going to show you a small example of how to create a plugin in Smarty. Um, it's definitely going to make your life easier uh, for, for the sheer fact that when you have a development team and you want to you organize how to you know, make the web design and make the PHP code interact correctly, normally you'd be having meetings all the time, this and that. With Smarty, what you can do is basically tell the web development team for the design side of things uh, the variables that they're going to need. And they can go ahead and make the templates with all the built-in functions, variable modifiers that are built into Smarty already. Uh, you don't worry about what they're doing. And all you have to interact on is the actual variable names, which has, which has the you know, array content or um, any data that you're passing over um, the website. And it's also the only thing I felt like talking about today. Uh, the biggest thing I hear from people is they understand that Smarty's presentation layer, but they don't really understand why they why why they benefit directly from using it. I don't I don't make high end application programs, but just for my my small projects, it's actually easier. Uh, but the the big gains are really from the software development of large projects. The huge rallying cry behind Smarty is let to let the programmers program and the designers design. When you have to interact all the time and you know and delegate different um, jobs of well you know. I expected you to make a loop of this. Why don't you do that? Or um, you know, your code's breaking my code here. Or the de or the designer wants to make his own loop, and he you know writes an, a vulnerability for your website now. And there's just there's just too much there's too much ground to cover between two different groups of people if you want to actually make stuff efficient. So this this lets everyone do their job and not have to worry about anyone else's job. Um, you can uh, create uh, templates. 
insanely quick. You probably have about three lines of code more than you would normally um, in any in any like actual web design. The HTML you can just embed directly in. Um, I'm going to go over the syntax pretty soon. You can see how easy it is to include anything you need, whether it's an array or a variable of of any data, or um, if you just have some like a PHP session variable. Everything is built in, so it's made for for the ease of the the web designer who wouldn't probably normally know. Um, a lot about you know logic programming, unless you know they did JavaScript or something like that. But the general like HTML web designer, CSS designer, they're not going to know a lot about um, you know sorting that array out and looping through it and creating their own you know back end for it. So this is this is where Smarty comes in. It takes it takes the burden off their shoulders and takes the burden off your shoulders since you don't have to you know show them what to do. Um, one of the one of the coolest parts of all of this is that des designers really can't break your programming code in the application end. Um, they take the data that, that you pass over through your class, and that's extended into the templating. The templating is is actually a compilation of your .tpl file, which is the template files, um, and you're actually going to make PHP files out of that, and it's all going to be you know seamless. You don't have to do anything past making the template file and you know instantiating that Smarty class. Uh, a lot. It has a lot of functions built in that you will want to program, but why waste the time? Uh, when you're actually programming, you know, high-end software development stuff in PHP or any other programming language, you know, there's not a lot of reason to, you know, create that plugin to do um, new line to, you know, br tags. It's it's a waste of time. You have a lot better things I'm sure to do. Otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what you're actually programming. Um, and the one one of the most important things for the high traffic sites are the caching of the templates. When you're dealing with the system resources of anything, pretty much, especially a web server, um, you have the MySQL queries, you have the PHP processing, um, you know, CSS, anything. Well, CSS is you know client side for the most part, but um, anything that the the system has to do, why make it do more than it really has to? So what's the what the caching is going to do for you is. When you actually make that template where the where the the template file is compiled into PHP, you can run that once every you know 30 minutes for the newest portion of the site, and then run the sidebar updates for the um, you know the RSS feeds every like hour. So you're basically taking that static static HTML that's being outputted and saving that. So, for example, when I was on um, smarty.php.net for the news. They actually had a typo in there, so I, I'm like, you know, could you fix that up? And they're like, sure. You know, just wait, wait 30 minutes for our templates to update. Well, you know, I, I realized, oh yeah, I guess it makes sense they're using their own stuff. So, but uh, it's it. I, I actually know a couple of people who use this in high high end um, web applications, and they say that it saved them a lot of trouble um, past not only having to do like, you know, redundant databases just because the um, the hits to the the database were so intense, but just the overall traffic of the site. Why waste your system resources more than you really have to? Maybe that's because I'm an administrator, though. So, I don't know. and the biggest thing is, you know, show me what it actually does and show me who uses it. Well, Drew Pal, if, if you guys know kernelchap.org, they're one of the people who use, who uses Drew Pal. Um, I guess that's Oops CMS. Um, it's a, it's one of the bigger CMS projects out there, and a lot better than. PHP Nuke and whatnot. Um, there's Bblog, which is PHP blogging. Psychostats, if any of your friends actually run game servers, they know about it, trust me. Um, <laughs> Citadel's notes is what I'm talking about. Uh, TikiWiki is one of, the, one of the more popular wiki um, applications for so, uh, web software. And uh, two companies that I know the owner of, eNotes, has crazy traffic. They're like the Spark Notes for, you know, well, this web generation, basically. Um, and then found you online is a social networking place that also does a heavy amount of traffic. So it, it goes to show you that this isn't something that's necessarily passing through. I also heard that people were port, um, porting over WordPress to it, which is you know, a, a high, uh, highly popular blogging software too. So that's uh, pretty good news. All right, so what we're going to cover today is uh, the basics. Syntax, variables, templating, variable modifiers, which I'm going to explain what those are exactly, functions, Creating and plugging, and then caching. All right, Smarty, uh, Smarty syntax. The delimiters by default. You can actually change these um, within the within the template file if you really need to. Like some people complain, well, my XML markup is getting screwed up by your your uh, 
you know, your delimiters or whatever. Well, you can change them if you want. It doesn't matter. Um, it's, so basically, the uh, left and right curly brackets are what everything you're going to be calling within the template file is. When, you, when you're making a template file, and you'll see this a little bit later too, um, you basically just type in straight HTML all you want. And whenever you want to invoke anything within Smarty, all you do is throw up the, the, the delimiters and you know, toss in whatever command or um, variable or whatever, whatnot are you doing. Um, so the variables, really standard stuff. The var name, you can call single items in an array. Or if you have an array with you know, separate, I um, uh, forgot the name, but if you have separate sections to each array, you can call it like that too. Um, so everything's pretty standard, what you can do in other program programming languages, especially PHP, since you're probably working with that. Um, it's, it's quite simple. Includes another standard thing, just invoke what, what file you're looking for. And this comes in handy when you're working with multiple templates and you, know, you don't want to have to you know, three, throw up like three display statements in your Smarty class in, in the PHP file. So you just include the template within the file, like the you know, header and footer, and then throw your main content in the middle and just call that one file to display it within your PHP application. Um, if then else, it's a little weird compared to I guess how you normally would think of an if then else statement. Um, as you can see, it's instead of having the uh, curly brackets on the outside of the um, if and the, and the else, it's actually surrounding the sections. And then how you actually end off any, any Smarty that has um, you know, a, a beginning and an end would be just be slash and then the name. That's pretty standard, I guess. Um, and then literals, in case you want to you know, embed some code of Smarty and not actually have it compile through when you, when you go through to actually compile the uh, templates, that's how you can do it really easily. The folder tree, I just added the sliding because I thought it would really help explain when you're developing your applications what you need to look for. Um, the, t the templates directly is tr directory is where every single template you make for that specific portion of the site goes. So you might have um, uh, you know blog news, and then inside that directory you'd have templates 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 underscore c, which is the templates cache. And whether or not you have caching on, it's going to create the cache because that's just how it works. Um, the, the only difference with the actual caching mechanism is that it's going to be saving the cache instead of overwriting it automatically. Um, and then configuration files, I'll show you just a quick example of this. They're basically just, uh, they, look, they look like uh, WinINI files pretty much. If you have you know, the colors of the website and you want to just keep those in one, one um, succinct place and not have to go back and change like 20 entries in your PHP stuff, you know, that's, that's a great way to do that. The configuration files are not mandatory. Um, the only thing that's mandatory are the template directory and the templates underscore C directory. Uh, one, one note to have is when you do the templates underscore C direc directory, make sure that it's writable by the web server since the web server is compiling the, the templates into PHP. It has to be able to write back that file. Um, all right, any questions so far? No? All right, variables and Smarty. Um, like a lot of other programming languages, variables are your link to everything. Um, whenever you do pretty much anything in Smarty, you're always going to be passing the data through because I'm not too sure what you'd be doing with Smarty otherwise. Um, so you can ha hold single values, full arrays, um, whatever you want within the variables. Um, if you have like if you have the need for a counter, which you can actually do without this, but <coughs> for example, if you have the need for a counter, you can actually um, create a variable within the template. Say you want to loop through it really quickly or something. Um, you also have you ha you have that ability if if you are so inclined. All right, uh, you guys read that okay? Okay, cool. Um, this is just a really really quick um, basic example of Smarty. It's going to seem kind of weird, but I'm not going to have a lot of examples of the code, just because it not everything is going to be a applicable. I just want to get anyone who wasn't really familiar with PHP or programming in general a quick idea of how to write something like this. Um, it's going to be up to you, obviously, to take what I show you and you know convert that into um, into what you had originally, and you know transform your site from something that was you know munched together into something that's you know divided and organized. So, uh, in case you're not familiar with program, which probably a few of you aren't, front row, um, Smarty Framework include basically j that just takes the entire class for Smarty, tosses it in there, and allows you to start using all the abilities of it. Um, for anyone that's not familiar with object-oriented programming, to instantiate a new um, instance of Smarty, just you know, assign a variable, type new Smarty, and you're pretty much set up. 
Um, I made a quick uh, array, um, P hotels, just to designate its PHP hotels, and then S hotels is going to be Smarty hotels, just to try not to confuse people. That it's a bit confusing, I guess. Um, we're going to be sending the second line, the actual variable for Smarty. You'll see you'll see the um, assignment of assign, and then the hotels for Smarty, which that's the actual variable name. And then make sure when you're doing that, you don't actually put in the dollar sign. It already knows that it's a variable. You don't need to tell it that again. Um, and then P hotels is the content that we're assigning to that variable S hotels. Um, and then the last step is just call your template up. And that's where all the, all the work happens. Uh, with, also with variables, there's a re reserve tree with Smarty. Um, it's actually really handy. I used to have to like, or I used to think I had to assign um, if I'm passing like a post variable over or something or request from a, a query string, um, assign it within it and then pass it over when I display. Well, it's actually built in right, right within uh, the Smarty templating. So if you, want it, where, if you want your PHP session ID, you can call it up like that. Um, your post request cookies from PHP, uh, at, as you normally see in PHP. Um, and then if you, there's a special variable tree called section. I'm going to show you that in a few seconds. Um, it's, basically, it's basically how you loop through stuff. Um, so in this example, the section called hotel, you could see the total items of array with that. Um, so n nothing's, nothing's ambiguous. It's, it's all really straightforward. So that definitely helps people out. So we're going to check out a quick example. This isn't going to be anything pretty. It's just to show you. Um, well, this will just show you a, a pretty much standard uh, output of a website. And then I'll get into how I created that. Go Firefox. Let's see if I can uh, bump that up a little. Dun, dun, dun. OK, that's good enough. Uh, so the top line, um, I'm, print, I'm printing each value. And you're going to see, I just pretty much call each array value individually, 0, 1, 2. In the second, um, in the second instance, I'm actually using Smarty section to loop through the values of the array for me, um, which is obviously a lot a lot less boring, in my opinion. And it's, it's going to be quicker. Your, your code's going to be smaller. Um, your template's going to be smaller. You're not going to have to worry about you know, defining your own loop to do things. It's all built in for you. So let me get back to the presentation. All right, so here's, here's section and array items. The top one, obviously, is how we originally called it. You know, 0, 1 from S Hotels, which is the Smarty Array. So in my example, to loop through an array, you can use the section, um, the sec section in Smarty. Um, so the section name, we just call it hotel. And the loop is the data that you pulled through. So the S hotels is the array that we pulled through from the PHP file originally. And then you just call um, the hotel within the brackets for S hotels. And that, the, the name is basically just the loop iteration. That's all it really is. Um, you, can name it, you can name it like iteration, even if it's less confusing for you. Um, other interesting uses of section are the, to the total, which I showed you earlier, row number. Um, you can actually do if then else within the loop, which is kind of nice. Uh, that saves you a couple, extra, a couple extra lines that you normally have to include. So you know, if, if there are no hotels, you know, show us there's no hotels. Don't make me have to type another like four lines of PHP just to output that. Um, so all right, about configuration files. Um, like I said earlier, they're going to define you to use um, the static variables that you may need to define in any program. The stuff that you're going to have to go back to time and time again. If you're if you're making one template and you know you copy paste that those files over, you know just change the variables in the in the configuration file. Don't worry about the actual application code. Don't worry about anything else because um, it's all statically defined. The, the actual loading of the configuration files is pretty much trivial. Config load the file name and then the section. Like I was saying before, it looks like a WinINI file pretty much. Um, you know, it's really straightforward with everything uh, that they do, which is kind of nice, especially for the beginner programmer if they want to keep it. Matt. Before you move on from the code, does Smarty have a concept of functions? Uh, well, yeah, I'm actually getting to quite a few examples of functions, and I'll show you how to make a function pro or a function yourself. But thank you for asking. Um, so when we actually want to call a value from this, the, the configuration file, you can either um, toss inside of the delimiters two pound symbols around the variable name, or we can just call through the Smarty Reserve tree dot config and then the variable that you had. 
And my room was actually pretty cheap, so that was kind of cool. Um, but the same results come out either way you do it. There's no, there's no benefit to either one, except one's obviously shorter than the other. OK, mid-presentation security note, since it's fun. Um, Smarty does, does allow the embedding of PHP within the template if the security features are turned off. This is off by default. So if you are sharing your template files with, um, with someone you're not familiar with, you know, make sure you check that code over. Or you can actually turn uh, Smarty into safe mode. One of the main features of Smarty, like I was talking about before, is you know, it won't let the designers break the code, but only if you don't let them. So if, if you aren't totally sure about their qualifications as, as a PHP programmer, you know, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't advise them, um, letting them do that. But from what I've seen, at least, there's really no reason that you would ever have to um, start invoking PHP within the template, because the whole point is to separate the two layers. It's just kind of there in case, you know, I, I have no idea. <laughs> but it's, it's there for you if you need it. All right, so let's get into the actual template files. Um, .dpl is the standard extension for the templates in Smarty. Um, the data assigned to your instance of Smarty is now able to be used constructively in, within the template. And the template has built-in variable modifiers. These are pretty much just, um, I mean, a lot of these actually kind of exist in PHP to begin with. But the thing that people keep asking me is, you know, isn't this redundant? Why do we do it in here? Well, the point is that you're separating the layers. So if you want that um, equality to exist, you have to create it in Smarty. So that's why they've built in a ton of variable modifiers and a ton of functions to do the things that you normally do. So truncation of text, um, I'm going to show you a couple of examples of of these, actually. Ind uh, indentation of text, stripping tags, word wrapping, string replacement, capitalization, date forming, counting characters. You can count words, um, you know, lowercase stuff, um, new line to break tag. There's, there's just a laundry list of them. So here's the, here's the first example I have of variable modifiers. Um, truncation. The difference between, you know, just something you're making and something that's already been made is the fact that People think of pretty cool stuff that you probably wouldn't think of. When I, when I used to code my own presentation layer stuff, um, when I made the function for it, I wouldn't think of, well, you know what? Instead of copying over that um, MySQL uh, database into um, two separate sections, one for like the preview and one for the you know, body of the text, instead of here, we, we do the exact same thing with the truncation. Um, so in the first example, it's pretty straightforward. It uses pipes just like Unix. So you're taking the data that you have and piping it through to the actual function that you're, that you're running on it. Um, so in the first example, you'll truncate at the t uh, 210th character, but also end at the end of a word, so as not to cut off anything joke. Um, <laughs> thank, thank you. Um, you know, obviously, that's important. So if you're having a, you know, a new site, you don't want to see slash dot like, telling you about something with Linux and you know, start saying Linus Torval and then offend everyone when you cut off half of this cool name. Um, so that's that's one of the, the that's actually the default that it won't cut off um, that it, that it won't truncate anything. Um, the handy one that a lot of people seem to be using with it is um, same example of of cutting off the word length, but in this instance, what we're going to be doing, you can actually add whatever you want to the end of the string. So you can add an ellipsis like most people do to lead into the rest of the article. Um, you know, if you have some really cool thing, you, like a tag or something, you add it at the end of everything you do, toss it in there, and it'll truncate and add that at the end. Um, Matt? Uh, how do you truncate without as to cut off in the middle of a word if necessary? Um, it just, just based on the function itself, it, it goes through and makes sure that what it's going, what it's truncating, it, like even A counts as a word when you do the count I mean, words. I don't wanna, if I want to cut off at the 210th character, no matter what. Oh, OK. Well, that's actually the next point. Thank you for bringing that up. If you add colon true after, after the string that you have of what you want to you know, end it with, um, <laughs> at the end of the modifier statement, you will truncate at the exact character. So people like Matt that want to like, ruin their blog entries can go, go ahead and do it. <laughs> All right. Wow. Yeah. Truncation. Awesome. <laughs> All right, stripping tags, another thing that a lot of people obviously have to use. Um, you know, they don't want all those kids pasting those iframes and shit. Come on. Um, so we take our blog content, pipe it through to the strip tags. Um, and by default, it's actually going to include a space any place that, you, um, that you're removed. Because when you do the replace, you have, obviously have to replace it with something, whether that's 
white space or a no space itself, whatever. Um, by default, it actually gives you a single white space. I don't know why, so I'd recommend using a colon false at the end. Um, so as you can see, it just it's going to remove anything with um, the uh, greater and lesser symbols around it. So font color, goodbye font color, goodbye iframes, goodbye JavaScript. No one should use JavaScript in the first place, but whatever. Um, so there you go. A third example. Yes, Matt? I have one other question on the previous slide. Uh, the last previous slide. It says uh, it essentially removes anything with the brackets. Yeah. What if you actually want to keep brackets some, in there? Some brackets, you know, not all. Yeah. Make like some exceptions. Do literals for it? Yeah, you could do literals. That is true. Thank you, Muchimus. Um, what I'd recommend doing is making your own plugin, which I'll actually show you how to do. Because, I mean, for PHP programmers, this stuff is really trivial. So um, to make something that's you know, going to do a regex on it, you know, it would take no time at all to make your own. So for example, word wrapping. Everyone likes word wrapping. Um, just, this, is more, this is less because I'm impressed by these variable modifiers and more just to show you that everything that you would need on a, on a, on a basic website is built in. You, know, you, don't, you don't really need for a lot. And what you do need for, like I said, it's plug-in, it's extensible, it's really easy to do. Um, so in this example, just, just, like, the, um, just like the truncation, it's going to wrap um, to the near, nearest 10th character, so the, the whole word nearest to the 10th character, and wrap using new line. You can change that to a break tag. You can change that to a break tag with the forward slash, which is HTML compliant. You probably want to do that these days. Um, you know, end it with whatever you want. You know, uh, new um, you know, an HR tag, whatever. Um, if you add true at the end of the statement, it's going to wrap to the exact or wrap to the exact character, like our truncate variable modifier. Um, so, quick notes on variable modifiers: you can combine any number of them using pipes. So say you have your blog content, pipe it through the truncation, pipe it through to the strip tags, pipe it through. So you don't have to have multiple lines in your template, just one line piping through. Um, and you can actually combine them with the Smarty functions also. And this is a direct example for the Smarty docs, which are amazing. Um, that's the only thing you really need for resources. Um, so I'm actually going to show you HTML table in a second. But this is basically just an example. You're going to loop through the my var data, whatever, that, whatever the data that, that may be, and then pipe when you're you pipe it through, and you're going to truncate it the 40th character, and then add an ellipsis at the end. And so when you're doing your table, say you have you know, the table rows going on, um, each table row is only going to have that little synopsis of whatever content you have. So Smarty Functions, um, as Matt was wondering about, HTML table is um, obviously one of the more useful ones, since a lot of people use tables for their data, um, showing data. Um, this thing has this this function has an asinine amount of um, complexity to it. The, it takes like a whole page just to sh see all the attributes you can actually assign to the table, and just think how much how much space you're saving not having to type all the tr tags, all the td tag, all the tr. It, it, you know why waste your time? Um, so you can do stuff. Uh, here's just quick examples: table attribute of border equals zero, pretty standard, and columns equal four. The data it's looping through is called the data variable. Um, so in this example, we, we loop through an array of data, and we loop through after the fourth column to a new row. So in the, in the first table cell, you know, first, um, or let's say array 0, second data cell, array 1, third data cell, array 2, and um, fourth data cell, array 3. And then it's going to drop down to a new row, and then go over and over and over. So this is, this is a really quick way just to, you know, um, if you have that list of, you know, people's names, emails, and, you know, birth dates, social security numbers, whatever, um, you can loop through it and put that table online for your friends. Um, this is a lot cleaner than making your own, your own loops to deal with tableizing. Yeah, that's a word. Um, data and, <laughs> no, it's not. Um, <laughs> uh, tableizing. Yeah, tableizing. <laughs> this is actually um, being submitted by me to, no, it's not. Um, so we're going we're gonna to go through this data a lot faster than it would be to make our own stupid function to do this. Like I said, why waste the time? You, if you're programming software, you obviously have something more important to do than make a loop to, to cycle through table data. Um, so more on Smarty Functions, uh, HTML options. So, so let's say we have two arrays. Um, one array has values. Um, you'd normally call these values when you're, when you're going through your PHP to see what people selected, one to three. 
and the other has hotel names we defined earlier. So we're going to make our selection, which is, this is exactly how it's going to look in the, in the template file, like I said. You can pass directly through um, the HTML without worrying about anything. There's no you know, echo tags to toss in there or anything. Where is echo, by the way? Um, so we have the HTML tags, or H, sorry, HTML options um, function. The values we're pumping through are the one to three, which is the IDs, and the, the output is the um, hotels. Yeah, James. Why don't we? Yeah. Why would we? Like, my, we call stuff from my school databases and stuff, put them in like, a select field like that, and we do four each. Um, is it different because it's a flat file? Uh, from my experience, I'm not using, well, this is the template file. The actual data is the hotel's file, or the hotel's um, variable. So when, you, when you're calling into MySQL, it's going to pump it out, if you use like ParaDB correctly, it's going to pump it out into an array that Smarty knows how to deal with. And it's going to do the work for you. So you don't, you don't have to worry about parsing through that data, you know, exploding it, um, you know, you know um, delimiting it with like a colon or something. That's all done for you. It's just a simple array. Um, like I showed you early in, in, the, um, in the variables example, you're, when you have like user.email, when you have the uh, associative array, that's the word, um, when you have the associative array, it'll actually just deal with that for you, how, how you'd want to deal with it. And if not, you know, make a plugin to do it. Um, so, so our output on the website, just, just one row, for example, looks like this. You have your select, um, which we already had in there. It's going to do your option line for you. The label tosses up there, and the actual option name is going to pop up there, and the value, which you're probably going to want to use to pass back to PHP when they select that, is in there. And you know, say you had you know, all the presidents, and you had a website for your students, or you, say you had all the United States, and you want to do, um, and you had it in a database, and you didn't want to have to have that like asinine 200 long um, list of different things in your, in your actual HTML. Well, you never have to touch this because you know, the, the cache is the cache. You never have to edit that yourself. All you're going to see is this small line in your template file. So not only do you separate the templating and the, the actual application code, but you're downsizing it you know, extremely. So here's some quick functions that I mean, there's, there's quite a few more, but these are just some examples. Um, when you want to do a counter, like I said, you can, uh, you can do this a lot easier than actually making your own value and making a you know, loop with a section. Um, so you can just do a counter, um, start at 0, skip 2, it, you know, iterate at 2, and you know, do whatever you need between that. Um, mail to function, this, is, this has a couple more um, examples, too. Like you can do, you can do the uh, carbon copy. You know, blind carbon copy stuff in here. You can actually um, do JavaScript encoding to make that come up correctly. Um, so that's that has a lot of uh, attributes also. And then fetch if you want to toss in like a text file from someplace and not really deal with much more than that. You know, just fetch the file. There's actually um, one other one I didn't talk about. It's called Capture. It'll actually let you, you know, toss in the the word capture between the delimiters. Say you fetched a file and then you turn and then you know and capture. On that file that you're that you're going through, it, you can you know truncate it if you want or do whatever, and it's going to do that pre-processing pre-processing for you. Um, and the really useful function that a lot of people get a kick out of because they had to make their own loops for this all the time, um, cycling through those colors on your table, because you know for readability reasons you don't want to have all the same colors rows on your on your 200 um, 200 row table. So you just type in your, in your cycle values in there within your section, which is, you know, all this is so small. And I, you probably could actually um, use the HTML table in here, too. I just kind of did it like this. Um, but, you know, if you wanted those cycle values to be, you know, those constants, use the configuration file. And then if you, you know, you change your template or you copy and paste your template directory and want to make another template for it, you know, a green one or red one, just edit those two, fo two, uh, those two uh, spots in the um, configuration file and you're good to go. Yeah, much you miss. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, that that wouldn't be a problem. Any, you know, anything you need to cycle through, as long as it as it's in the order that you want it, and as long as um, it's not going to interfere with the rest of your style sheet stuff, um, it should it should be cool. Um, a, a plugin. I'm not sure if they have it, but it would be actually pretty useful to make. Is if you could, um, you know, toss in your cycle value, cycle value, 
and then toss in like a like the variable that you want to deal with, and then toss in an ending value so you could close off the, like, those div tags or something. That'd be pretty useful. Okay. So uh, yeah, and you're just you know you're, you're going through your um, data on your table cells like that, straightforward still. Um, so that that kind of combines a couple elements of Smarty, and you know just just think of the last time you had to make that table data with the MySQL stuff or whatever, and you know you you parse through it and you parse through it to do this and that, or you had all straight text files that you had to deal with. It's just it's just insanely quicker. So. Um, and here's the, this is out of their book, they call it advanced stuff. I'm not sure why it's the advanced stuff, but pre-filters, you can remove those unwanted comments from the templates before they are compiled. Um, the post-filters are adding those unwanted comments, but cooler. Um, so like, so say the original comments had like, you know, God, I don't know, like this website sucks or something in there. And then you add in the post-filter, you know, created by Smarty, copyright, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's something that you don't want to have to do every page you do, so just copy and paste it and you know, you're good to go. Um, and the output filters, I'm going to show you an example of how to make a plugin with an output filter. This is going to replace, in my example, replace your user-friendly tags. You guys see like in WordPress or whatever, you have the bracket tags where it says like code, and then you end it with a slash code and bracket tags instead of typing like, um, you know, the code, ta the code tag in HTML and the pre-tag in HTML and, you know, your, um, your class for showing code correctly or whatever. So this is a lot quicker way to do it. And I, a lot of people implement s similar functions. So. so here's a really, really quick and horrible plugin I made um, for the example of this. Um, it, it's, it's pretty good just to keep it hierarchical. So you know, smarty underscore what type of filter, an output filter underscore, and what's the name of it? You know, I called it tags. So you have your source data, and then smarty, which is the, the link back to your actual templating. Um, and it knows how to deal with these kind of things for you. You don't really have to know how the, the, it really works out. All you have to know is how to program what's inside here and then just return the value back. And you know, that's, that's what you wanted it to do. So we're going to find the code tags and replace them with the HTML needed. So you know, just go through PHP. It's no, it's no different than anything else, else you've ever done. Just make the function all in PHP um, and then cycle through that and get rid of all the tags you don't want there. Um, and how to call a plugin? This this will actually be in the um, in the actual PHP file when you're you know doing your inv uh, invocation of the class file, creating the new instantiation of Smarty. So all you're going to type is load filter, what type, output filter, and the name of that tags. And there's a directory under the structure of the um, of the actual uh, library installation of Smarty. It'll just say plugins. All the, all the plugins are in there. They're uniformly named. There's a there's a direct naming convention that you can you know abide by if you really feel like it. Um, uh, and then obviously you're, you're going to display the page that you just loaded through the filter. So, um, How am I doing on time? OK, cool. Um, template caching, uh, you are able to cache the entire page or just a single section, like I was explaining earlier. Um, you, know, you know, why cache? Um, the news every more than every you know five minutes or something. If it's going to be updating, you know, don't wait don't wait a week and a half to you know recache it. But for the stuff like the sidebar or um, you know, God, I don't know the footers or something, you're not going to have to redo that. So don't waste the processing powder to do it. Um, so here's an example I just made up. Uh, you you query your news database each time someone visits the site. Instead of this, you know, cache the news page and show the static page to people. Set the refresh for whatever you wish. So you know, 60 minutes an hour, whatever. Well, 60 minutes or an hour and a half. Um, the basic aspects to caching are. Um, I actually had these in my notes. Um, the zero means off, which is the default. One means on, and then the two means it's on. But you can also, basically, in your template file, toss down that you want separate sections. If in the same template file, you can actually denote separate cache lifetimes which is the next thing down here. The cache lifetime, just the number of seconds, so 3,600 for the, for the hour or whatever. And if for some reason you have to um, you know, destroy the cache file within your program, you can clear cache. And, uh, so. Would that be used for security purposes? <sighs> would it, it, it'd be used for, man, what would it be used for? I don't, I don't use it. Um, <laughs> but th there's actually something else I thought I included in here before I get to this part, because um, this is the most important part, of course. Um, 
you can actually do uh, caching groups. So you don't have to invoke a bunch of clear caches. You can actually denote one name and then pipe the names of the, of the separate sections and then just clear cache in the whole thing. So, um, so that's pretty much the end of my presentation. Um, I'd like to thank Smarty, most importantly, for you know, posting that we were speaking here. They seem to get a lot of attention for Nauticon, which is awesome. Um, of course, thank all of you for actually staying around for the last speech of the day and not going to root Druid. He seems like an elite hacker, but whatever. Um, Joe, <laughs> Joe Stump, who was my boss this summer, who actually told me about this and PairDB and some other stuff. Um, my fellow core staff and all our brave volunteers, and then pretty much everyone in this room. Is everyone here on, this, on the slide? OK, good. <laughs> so everyone's on the slide, right? So everyone's on the slide, right? <laughs> all right. We have a question. References. Question. So, reference it. OK. Yeah, questions. What's the uh, security history of Smarty? Lately, it's been pretty crappy. They just had a vulnerability in the strip tags mechanism. Um, but, but like I said, if you turn on safe mode, it's going to alleviate a lot of that. And there's not a whole lot of reasons why you can't turn on safe mode. Um, so, But for the most part, man, it, it's so easy to update. I don't know why you wouldn't. It's not like updating bind. You have to like turn it off and you know recompile it. You just copy and paste the files into the directory or update with the patch files. It's not a big deal. So, anyone else? Citadel. Random googling. Random googling. Like all good presentations. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Is that what college kids do now? And that references is Google. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> All right, and that's it. Anyone? Yeah.